All right, so, so far we were able to build this form that we can just basically type something and click add and it's just gonna add to our spreadsheet. Let's try to replace this input box that says my item with a dropdown instead. Now, before I do the actual dropdown, let's try to do a little container around this box so that it doesn't go to the edge of this like this. So I'm gonna go back to bootstrap documentation and let's look at this layouts. I want to keep this form, so I'm gonna right click and open this layout section. Let's see what we can do here. We have the grid uh, and we have containers. See, there's the regular container. There is the small container. Let's try this one, just regular container. So I'm just gonna put this div around my content. I'll copy this, go back, open the script editor. Let's go back and get our user form. This is our HTML. So this is that body section. I'm gonna go here, paste that code. I don't need this. And then just take this div closing and put this all the way down here after this ending of this div. Save this, let's see what this looks like. So I'm gonna go back and redo this show form. So now that's nicer, we have some edge to this. All right, let's convert this to a dropdown. So let's go check our documentation again. This is our forms. Now at some point here, there's gonna be an example of a dropdown. There it is. If I scroll down a little bit, see that's that select here, so I need to make sure I get this entire div right here, copy that with the label, select, options, all of that. Go back to my code and this is where I need that to happen. I'm gonna keep this for a second and paste this below, then I'll go ahead and remove this in just a little bit. So if I paste this, let me just tab this in so it looks nicer. Okay, there it is. So now we should have a dropdown. So if I go back and reload this, again, clicking on this should do it. We should have a dropdown here, see? One, two, three, four, five. Now I don't want this to be one, two, three, four, five. I want this to be some particular options. Going back to this, if I want this to have, let's say iPhone and my item as two options, I would have to go here, replace all these options and replace this one saying, like iPhone and this one is my, what was it? My item. Now I want this quantity received to be this. So I'm gonna copy this quantity received text, place it in here. And I'm gonna just take this ID that was for quantity received and put it for this. And we also have to do it for four part as well. Now, once I did this replacements, I'm gonna have to remove this. We cannot have two things with the same ID. I'm gonna get rid of this and we should have now a dropdown. So I'm gonna save this, go back and load the form again. And now I have item name and quantity. This should have been the opposite, shouldn't it? This should be the item. Okay, oh boy. I think I'm just gonna replace the IDs here this here, this there. So this should be the item name. It should go here. And this should be quantity received for this. And I'm gonna do quantity received here as well. And item name. Okay, so I think that should fix what I messed up before. So let's go back and rerun this. And now this is quantity received. This is our item names. Now, if you wanted this to be on top of this one, you would just basically grab this whole thing and put it above this. All right, let me actually do that. So I'm gonna take this and position this one right below, just like that. So now if I go back and reload this thing, See, I have this. So now let's see if we can actually work with this just like this without changing anything else. So I'm gonna take this, type some number, click add, 
And as you can see, that went in here, iPhone 5. If I change to my item and change it to 23, click add, that works. So now we have a drop down instead of a regular input box and it works just fine. Now, one thing I should probably do after we do this entry, we should probably make sure we clean this quantity box so it doesn't show up. I'm gonna go back to this. So in our code, we did this, that we run this script and we basically just get that data entered. Now, this is assuming that everything works well and it actually goes through. There's a chance that it may not actually go through well. So we have to do some handling and make sure that we only erase what's in here if clicking on this ad was successful and we were able to add the item in here. So in order for me to do that, I have to make sure that this add new row function actually has a return. So if I go back to my functions to make sure that this function has a return, I'm just gonna go here and after all of this, we're just gonna say return true. So if that all goes successfully, we're gonna return true. That's good enough. So what this is gonna allow us to do, it's gonna allow us to go to our front end and then do Google script run and give this with success handler, just like this. And this is gonna accept a callback function. So basically we're gonna say, if that function is successful and it returns true, let's just run this other function. Now we have to create that other function. So I'm just gonna call that function right here. I'm gonna call this one after submit. And now we have to create that function. So I'm gonna go below here and create that function. I'm gonna do this E argument in here. I'm probably not gonna be using that, but I'm gonna do that anyways. And that E is basically gonna be the return value, which in our case is basically gonna be if you remember the function, true. So basically this is gonna run if this is successful. So if that's successful, we'd like to clear that input box. And to get to that input box, I'm gonna get to this element again, which is quantity. And then I'm gonna make sure that I set the quantity value equal to blank. So I'm gonna save this, go back, reload this. Now we have this, I'm gonna do 33, click add. So that didn't go very well. Let's go check what we did. Hmm. I didn't type function right, function. Save this, let's try this again. Go back and reload this thing. All right, let's try this again. Hopefully this time it will go better. Okay, so we were able to enter that and then this cleared. Now if I do this 22, again, it adds to the spreadsheet first, then it removes it in here. Very good. Now the next logical step is gonna be to have this list of items come from someplace in our spreadsheet instead of being hard coded in our user form. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add a new worksheet, call this options. Now I'm gonna list those options here. The first part is gonna be to create a function to get this list of items. So in order for me to do that, I will have to go back and create a function not in the form itself, this is gonna be a backend function to get the options first. So I'm gonna to go to functions and create a function. This one we don't need anymore, it was just a test. Now this function is gonna be a function to return our list of items. So let's give this a name. So this function needs to go to this options worksheet and get this range. So for that, I'm just gonna copy paste some things from here. We need to get the spreadsheet. Again, in that spreadsheet, we're gonna get the worksheet called options. 
I'm going to take the worksheet and do get range. And we need to start from row two, column one. Number of rows is going to be however many rows we have minus one. So if the last row is four, then number of rows is going to be three. So to get to that, we're going to do ws dot get last row minus one. And then number of columns is going to be one column, at least for now. So we'll do get values to get the array. I've decided to call this actually drop down options. All right, so once we get all of this, we need to return these results. So I'll just have to do return here to get those results back. So this will give us this function return drop down array. We're going to go back to this to our user form. And initially, we'll just keep this drop down with this options empty. So I'm going to remove all those options from this select drop down. And what we'll do, we'll get those options by calling that function. And once we get those options, we'll populate the select box. So we need to figure out when we're going to call this. So we're going to call this after this whole thing loads. So to do that, I'm going to go back and add a function that's going to run after everything loads. So what's going to happen after this loading, we're going to run that Google script run all over again. I'm just going to copy this line. And this time we're going to run that function that we called return drop down array. Actually, let me rename this to get drop down array. That's probably better. I'm going to copy that. Don't forget to save this. Come back here and that will be get drop down array. Now that function doesn't accept any arguments on like this one. So we don't need to pass anything to it. However, it will have a success handler because what's going to happen is that after we call this function, it's going to return this range back to us. So because of that, we need this success handler and we need to give it a different name. So this is going to be the name for this function. Let's create that function. This function is going to accept those values that we're going to get back from this spreadsheet that's going to be an array of arrays. And we basically have to just loop through this array and place those values wherever they belong. So they belong to this select box that has the ID item name. So let's go grab that select box. Now what we're going to do, we're going to take this array of arrays and we're going to run for each method on this. And this will accept a callback function. And parameter it's going to be passing is one of the lines in that array. I'm just going to call it a row, R actually. So every time we get a new row, what we're going to do, we're going to create one of those options that we need in here in the select box. So let's create that element. And the element is called option. So that is this option element. Now inside of that option element, we need the text content to be whatever is the value in that array. So we're going to get that by doing that row and getting the first item in the row. It's going to be array of arrays, which means this row is going to be the first row. And in our first row, it's just one column. If we had multiple columns, it would be zero, one, two, three. But now it's one column, so it's just going to be zero, which is the first item. Now, once we got the text content in this option, we want to place that option in our list of items. So I'm going to do item dot append child and we're going to append the option to it. So I'm going to save this. 
Now, this will hopefully add those elements to our list. However, we need to make sure that this function runs. So for this function to run, this has to run and get a success handler to get those options. But for this to run, this needs to run too. Now, there's nothing in our code running this after sidebar loads function. So we're gonna add an event handler to run this function when our sidebar loads, when the whole thing loads. So I'm gonna do that in here. So we're gonna take the document and add an event listener. Notice I'm not adding this event listener to an element in this particular case, I'm adding to the entire document. And this will have an event, which is DOM content loaded. And that is basically when the whole page loads. And after that happens, we want to run that function, the one that's called after sidebar loads. So I'm gonna save this. So basically this will trigger this function, which will be this. This will run that script in a background on our function side. This, that will return the range of values from our spreadsheet. And then after that's successful, it's gonna run this function and send that information to that function where we're gonna take that information and loop through that and get all those to that item. Let's see if we made any mistakes so far. So save, go back to this. I'm gonna go ahead and run this. So let's see if we have any items. Yeah, so you see it took a second for it to load because it does this after the page loads. But we have our options, apples, bananas, grapes. So now if I do this, enter three, click add. See, it clears. Now it's still adding to results. So if I go to results, I should see apples three. And I can go here and do bananas and do four. And that's gonna work. Now if I wanna add more to this list, I'm gonna have to go to this drop down options and add another option, oranges. Now I have to reload this because it's not gonna reload automatically. So I'm gonna do my form, show user form again. And now I should have oranges in this list too. So that gets us the drop down and we'll continue in the next video. And maybe we'll do a dependent drop down. So we'll have two drop downs and one is gonna be let's say fruits or vegetables, and then depending on which one you select, you're gonna get a list that's gonna give you either different fruits or different vegetables to choose from. But for this one, that should be it. Thanks for watching, please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.